What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you a pretty fun build. It is a Grenader Rogue build. It's a pure Grenader Rogue build. We're going to be dropping tons and tons of grenades in this build. So I'm going to break down everything you need to know of the build gear, paragon skills, etc. And showcase how to play it because it is very difficult to play. But once you kind of get the muscle memory down, it is very easy. You guys can see that the gear is pretty low level. I have one level eight item, a couple level fours, but the gear is pretty low. I've already managed to clear like 80, 85 with this, with this gear. So once you get it all leveled up, you can probably get close to 100. We'll see once we get further along in the testing. So Grenader, Granada, Granada Rogue. So everything is going to be proccing through opportunists. But before we get there, let's go ahead and check out the skills and break down what we have here. So we're starting off with Puncture. Puncture is going to be our main um, primary skill that we're going to be attacking the most with. We're not actually using a core skill to like do our damage, so to speak. Okay, we're going to be, we are maxing out Flurry and going to be using Flurry to apply Shadow Imbuement and do some extra damage, yes, but it isn't our damage. Grenades are our damage. So we got Puncture all the way up to Fundamental Puncture, which is to help make enemies vulnerable because our skill is going to be combo points just so we do some additional damage and scale our grenades which is going to be sweet um then we're going to come down we're going to max out flurry and we're going to go into advanced flurry because evading enemy evading through an enemy will cause our next flurry to deal more damage and the most important part is stun this build is all about crowd control and you're going to see that in the showcase um you could do this one if you want for for vulnerable enemies but you don't really need this. You want more additional damage. And the stun effect is just so important on this build. So we do that. We are going to max out starter step. Because once we crit, we're going to move. This build is very, very fast. We knock out three points into sturdy for close damage. We got one point into siphoning strikes on the lucky hit just for the heal factor. Then we're going to come down. Of course, we're maxing out weapon mastery. Because this is we have this on every single road build. It's insane. We're doing Shadow Step into Discipline Shadow Step, so that way the cooldown gets reset. Um, however, you don't necessarily need this. You can see, like in the in the showcase that I'll do for you guys, that like we don't really use this a whole lot. You could probably just take the two points out of here and put them somewhere else. But for right now, it works. We got one point into Rugged for D uh, damage over time effects. Um, you could do more critically strike against days, or put another point if you want into Caltrops to kind of reduce the cooldown. Or like you just do more damage it's it's really really up to you it, it i mean you could even do another one in the siphoning strikes i kind of like that better uh but caltrops this is just to scale our damage guys discipline caltrops for the crit and double it against vulnerable enemies uh we got three points in the concussive after knocking back or knocking down we gain crit strike then try attacks we gain uh once they're critically strike a day's enemy they're knocked which is good then we're going to come down and do agile using a cooldown increases our dodge chance Dodge chance gets pretty high in this build, so having more dodge is great. We, of course, max out exploit as well as malice for more damage. And then this is the ability that is the main ability that we're going to use for the build, and that is concealment. We want as many ranks as this is possible to reduce the cooldown. And then we're going to be doing subverting concealment, a skill that breaks, which the skill that always is going to break is going to be our flurry, which is going to make everything vulnerable around us. And then we're going to be able to drop our grenades, which is going to do a crap ton of damage. So we want as many points in this. Now, I will talk about how to get more points in just a second once we get into the gear. Next, we got Shadow Imbuement. This is what's going to be some additional damage and, and allow our abilities just to blow up enemies, right? And then I took the points in to also help make them vulnerable, which is just easy peasy. Um, we don't have to worry about any kind of resource management here on this build because we're mainly attacking with puncture like i said and we're using flurry uh and then of course we max out frigid finesse for even more damage uh then we take no ultimate we're going to do one point into the adrenaline rush just to get to haste for even more movement speed and then while below we get increased attack speed our key passive of choice is going to be close quarters combat damaging a close enemy with marksman or cutthroat skills each grant attack speed while both attack speed bonuses are active you deal 10 percent increased damage uh, versus crowd control ours is 43 percent we have Flur uh, flurry which is cutthroat and then we have puncture which is marksman boom everything works easy peasy now let's get into the gear let's get into the gear guys everything 
funnels around the opportunist skill. When you enter or drop or enter or break stealth, you drop cluster grenades that explode at 12,131 base damage and stun enemies. Our grenade skills deal 80% increased damage. So every time we enter stealth with concealment and every time we break stealth out of concealment, we drop eight total grenades. So you'll see right here when I enter stealth, I drop grenades. And then when I break stealth, I drop grenades. So that's eight total grenades in a, less than a second. Uh, on our helmet, we do have God Slayers. This just helps us with our crowd control duration as well as the damage on the pole. However, if you do want to run Shaco, that is perfectly fine. You can run Shaco and then you will get four more ranks into concealment, which will help reduce the cooldown. Perfectly fine. I just like the extra crowd control, especially against bosses when we stagger. In our chest piece, we have Lethal Dusk. Okay, evading through an enemy inflicted by shadow imbument grants stealth. And remember, guys, when we break stealth or we enter stealth, we drop grenades. So every time we evade through a shadowed enemy, so we pop shadow imbuement, we, every time we boom and then we break it again, we drop grenades every time. And we just scale the grenades. It's nuts. Next, concussive strikes. This is just the lucky hit for days, but we deal 20% more damage for days. Insane. Now we got resilience. Okay, resilient assailants. Breaking concealment gives us more res, which is great. But killing an elite enemy reduces cooldown of concealment by 12 seconds. So when you're sliding through, we're kind of elite hunting. Every time we kill an elite, this goes from 15 to 2 seconds. I know it's 12 and you say 3, math is hard. But by the time this actually happens, you're down to about 2 seconds, a second and a half. And your concealment is right back up. So this is how we reset it all the time. Doom. Shared misery. Boom. Crowd control enemies have... Uh, I actually need to increase the power on this. But uh, crowd control, it spreads insane. And then, of course, opportunist. On our, on our weapons, we're going to have three different powers that the initial part of the power does nothing, really. It's just to scale our grenade damage. So on here for tricksters, Caltrops also throws us um, cluster grenades that stun, that deal more damage and stun. But our grenade skills deal 39% increased damage. Uh, Artful Initiative. When you spend 100 energy, you released a cluster of stun grenades. Grenades deal 40% increased damage. On our amulet, surprise, this is the other bread and butter of the build. When you evade or shadow step, which is the reason why we're running shadow step and not dash, you leave behind cluster of exploding stun grenades. Your grenade skills 60% increased damage. On our ring, Retribution, this does increased damage against stunned or knocked enemies. Everything should be stunned at the minimum. And this also is still double dipping against bosses. And then this ring right here, guys, is kind of your flex spot for the build. I enjoy Flurry because then Flurry damages all enemies around me, which when I have Shadow Impugment, instead of just hitting the enemies directly in front of me, Instead of just uh, attacking straight in front. Instead, I make everything around me vulnerable, which just makes it even better. So then that way, no matter which way I want to evade, I am evading through a shadow stepped enemy. Or excuse me, a um, shadow imbued enemy. And I'll continue to drop cluster grenades. So I really like that. Other options you guys could do is you could do accelerating for even more attack speed if you want. Um, the, the choice is really up to you. This is a huge flex spot for the build. I just like Flurry. It just seems more consistent. So test around with the guys, play around with. This is only version one of the build until we can get to the like end game and level this stuff up. But that's what we got. Now let's go into the Paragon board real quick. All this will be linked down in the description below, guys, so you guys can see the, the build and the Paragon board and all that stuff in the written guide. But we are rocking Ambush. More damage to enemies affected by trap skills. We got Control for obvious reasons, for more damage against crowd control, especially Frozen. We're doing Pride. For increased damage to both healthy and injured also to get the nice little trick up here for the 18 percent increased max life if you guys aren't doing this 28 percent increased max life is insane then we got night stalker uh entering stealth reduces the active cooldown of shadow and by four seconds 
Shadow and Beamit's cooldown right now is 12 seconds, so we go to eight. And more importantly, on our gear pieces, we have eight actual strikes of Flurry or Shadow Step before we actually have to reset our Shadow and Beamit, which is really insane for the build. Uh, next on the Paragon, we got Explosive. This is our bread and butter skill, and we put the most points in it. We have plus 500 and 94% increased stun damage, or, or excuse me, stun grenade damage. And then we gain damage reduction, which is awesome. Insane. We got 75 points in this. Then we got Turf, which is going to deal us increased damage to close targets, plus damage reduction, which is really good for rogues. Because as you guys all know and love in the comments, rogues are fragile. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate this real quick on the uh, dummies, and then we're going to go do a pit. <clears throat> I'm just going to showcase a 66 so you guys can kind of see the speed of it. But um, essentially how the build works is this. You want to enter concealment, pop your shadow imbument, then run up to the pack, shoot flurry, evade, flurry again, evade, concealment. Now, we're not going to have the concealment proc because we don't kill it in actual elite. I will put it on elite just for the sake of this, this demonstration. But... How would the build would work would look something like this. So you pop this, shadow imbue. And then meanwhile, in between your strikes, in between your evades, you're going to use puncture. One, to rack up your combo points. But more importantly, to reset your evade. So on our boots, this is very important for the build. You need attacks, reduce evades, cooldown. So when we're up here, we boom, right? And then we can just keep evading. And then you can throw Caltrops just to scale the enemy, the damage. It's pretty nuts. Um, Demon suggested when running Hectic on pants instead of power. This one, breaking conceal. Maybe it's a, not a bad option. But now let's go do a 66 just to kind of showcase. Um. Uh, we, we really need Concealment Demon because then we can drop as many Cluster Grenades as possible. But again, this is going to be all through testing. So let's just go ahead and showcase this. Uh, for, the, for the runs, guys, if you want to run potions, you come over here to the Alchemist. You're going to grab the Quest Elixir. And then the two ones that I suggest you use is obviously this one to scale your life. And then you have a few options in potions. You could do Elixir Advantage for more lucky hit and attack speed. Um, you could do the Precision, which is Chris Strike Chance and Chris Strike Damage, which is great. I'm going to use this one, I think, instead, instead of the advantage. But let's go rock. We're trying our best to get to, like, uh, like speed farming 80s and 90s for this build. But let's do a 66 just to showcase. This is a big break point for the build, um, just to kind of showcase here. Single target Linux is pretty good in the video. You guys will see this at the end, especially when we stagger. So let's go ahead and break this down. Hopefully, we'll be able to speed through this really, really well. Um, I've been really trying to put together a big um, build, so let's go ahead and rock, man. Try to get the... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Just shadow step right through, man. It's it, it can feel clunky, but you do so much damage on this. There we go. Whoa, I'm throwing two. And I love the concealment proc when you like kill somebody because you're just you're just invincible and then your concealment is just right back up right and then they just get deleted and you guys can see I like never run out of um, shadow imbuement stacks it just does not happen Concealment's already back up. Concealment's back up again. 
And we are just flying right now. Like I said, I got very low level gear right now. So it... The hardest part to like get, get used to is like the combination of all of the skills. Oh, this is going to be sweet. I'm not even going to I'm not going to grab the lethal just for the video. And we are just blasting, man. Just blasting. You see how it just deletes enemies? It's so fun. The hardest part is like chaining in between like your combo points and trying to make sure you scale that correctly. Because that can be hard with the attack speed, but... so fun though man you can do so much damage and the crowd control on here is really nice and as long as you're like getting elites like resetting the concealment cooldown is so nice You guys will be able to see what we can do against bosses, which is really nice. Oh, did I run out of people? I hope not. Oh, man. I ran out of people for the video. Holy crap. There we go. Okay. Let's get concealment back, guys. And then we'll go, we'll destroy this boss so you guys can see how awesome the build is against the boss. We really got to stagger and we can stagger pretty quickly. So let's get rocking. Back up, dude. Oh, we got to dodge Lilith. And that's that, man. So that is the Grenader build, man. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's a very, very fun build. The mechanics are really tough to do, though. But we're still perfecting the build, guys. This is just version 1. But uh, once we can really hone down and kind of precision it in and maybe adjust some of these powers and, you know, the Paragon board, etc., this build will really take off. I'm really hoping to be able to clear like a G100 with it um, or Pit 100. I'm thinking Greater Rifts on Diablo 3. Uh, a Pit level 100, that would be super sweet. But yeah, guys, this is Grenader. Like the video, guys. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. It would be pretty sweet. And yeah, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get this video over 100 likes. And let's make more Grenader Rogues. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, as always. Stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.